Um, so hello everybody. Uh, this week we're talking with Onkar Sharma. He's from Eagle Relocations. Um, Onkar, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself or about Eagle Relocations? Uh, yeah, sure. Hi, Nian. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, we are a moving company based in London, and um, we've been going for 52, 53 years. It's a company my father started in 67. Um, you know, kind of typical story of an Indian immigrant that came over here with nothing and then decided that he was going to be a shipper. And um, it all kind of escalates from there. Um, my dad's retired now, but he's very much uh, an active man. Um, and we've been, yeah, we've been basically in the moving and storage business for over 50 years and we've been moving people internationally for probably 45 years, oh, right. which is quite unusual because most people start off doing local stuff domestically and then they go sort of national and then they go international and we were kind of the opposite way around. We weren't doing very much domestically, but um, we do a fair amount of domestic work now, but yeah, it's predominantly international. All oh, right. Oh, that's cool. And did um, did it start off between India and the UK? Is that how it started? No, I think originally it was intended to be that way, but it starts off with doing, he's doing a lot of East and West Africa stuff because of, he was located in East London and that's where the market was. And then we, uh, we did pick up the Indian High Commission, uh, which was the first embassy we got. Um, and yeah, now it's predominantly, I would say, US, Australia, uh, and the Middle East are the biggest markets. All right, cool. Well, that's excellent. And obviously domestically around the UK. Yes. Yeah, excellent. Um, sorry, around the UK. Cool. So if I was going from the UK to Australia, um, how how would I go about getting started? What would you say is the, one of the first things people need to look at as part of their relocation journey? Oh, um, Okay, I think the best moves are usually well planned. So the Australian market tends to pick up towards the end of the year because the school years. So it's, um, I think the Australian school year starts in January. Yes. Um, so people tend to have a summer here and then around September time thinking about packing up and leaving. And so the kids kind of get extended summer holiday because they, they have a summer holiday here. And then they go over to Australia and then they didn't go up to school until January, which is pretty cool. Um, and in normal times, it takes uh, a couple of months for a container to once it ships to arrive. Mm -hmm. So the transit times are sort of six weeks. You need to add on to that another week or two to get it through customs and quarantine. So it can a full container can take about eight weeks. Um, so it's a couple of months to get it typically from door to door and sometimes it can take longer but unfortunately at the moment with the pandemic um it's taking a little bit longer which is um, a whole other story yes yeah that's a whole level of complication and and on that do you are you able to visit people's houses at the moment to do a site visit or do you have to do all that remotely interestingly enough we um we we always have done site visits and we have done for many years i was surveying myself sort of nine or ten years um and i still do um what ten, what the, the the interesting thing that happened in the last sort of 12 months was um while we were in lockdown i was in the office and we were still getting calls to say that when we can when it opens up can you move us and um everyone became familiar with zoom um, Zoom became the thing to do, you know, people were having Zoom quizzes, Zoom parties and whatever. So I started doing surveys on Zoom and it actually worked out quite well. And um, we realized that actually we could do a lot of video surveys and we wouldn't need to go out. People yeah. didn't necessarily want to see you, but they wanted to get a quote. And so since then, we have a team of video surveys with us now. And we video survey 95% of what we do. We still go out to see people in person if they would like us to. But we found that the video surveys are working really, really well. They're perfectly accurate. Um, they save a lot of time. Um, yeah. And obviously they save a lot of the environment because we haven't got to jump in a car or drive. Um, um, so we can do video surveys at, you know, most times of the day. And when people are at home, they can just sort of walk around with a phone or a tablet and say, okay, this is my bedroom, this is my kitchen, 
we can ask questions, we can see everything they want to move, we can work everything out and we can send them, um, you know, accurate quotes. Yeah, that's super handy. Yeah, it's been very good actually. It's been one of the one of the kind of bright spot, bright sides of what's happened in COVID in terms of uh, using technology. Yeah, yeah, and it makes perfect sense. It's funny, we never really thought about it beforehand, really, but I no. guess everybody's had that sort of training in Zoom, no. whether they liked it or not. Yeah, I think if you'd said to somebody a year and a half, two years ago, we'll do a video survey on Zoom, they would have looked at you and thought, well, you know, they don't understand that, but yeah. everybody does it now, so it's not a big deal. We actually use Teams, we don't use Zoom, but it's a video, it's a video yeah. call, and it works yeah, really well. Thing. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so COVID's not causing any issues there. Um, and then, so they just give you a buzz and they say they, they want to go at a certain time of day and then you'll do the um, the video walkthrough and survey their house to yeah. give them the quote. Um, I've heard that there's certain things people can't bring in with them. I know Australian Customs have got a whole TV show about it. Um, <laughs> is it true you have to clean all your golf clubs and trainers and things like that? Yes, Australia are the, um, I wouldn't say fussiest, but they're the most um, demanding in terms of what the requirements are. And I think it's fair enough, you know, they don't want anything to mess with the environment. So yeah, it's common sense. It's a lot of common sense. Golf clubs, bicycles, trainers, um, garden equipment, garden furniture, anything that's been outdoors, we need to make sure it's clean. Um, if you don't clean it, customs will, and they'll charge you a lot of money to do that. So we just run through a few things and we advise clients and we go through them and to make sure that those things are done, taken care of, um, so they don't have any issues. I mean, everything is quarantined when it comes into Australia. So just because you've cleaned your items, it doesn't mean you're not going to go through Aquis and you're not going to have the fee. But uh, the fees are a lot less if you've done all the due diligence and cleaned everything. Um, instead of um, doing it when it gets to Australia, when when they've got to do it, then it costs a lot more. Well, sorry, what was what was that Aquas? Sorry, I'm using terminology that I think people are familiar with. Um, Australian Quarantine Inspection Services. That's Great. what it's called, Aquas. <laughs> yeah. So everything that goes into Australia has to go through Aquas, regardless whether you've got three boxes or a forty foot container, um, and that's a standard inspection. Um, and that's mandatory, everybody everybody goes through that. Um, what will happen is if you've got items that they've looked at and they think um, aren't clean enough, um, they may have them fumigated or cleaned or they may actually get destroyed. Um, so wicker is something you shouldn't take, pine cones, Christmas decorations, that sort of stuff, unfortunately, um, you shouldn't take those sorts of things with you. But essentially anything that's been outdoors, give it a good clean. And if they destroy it, they still charge you for the pleasure of destroying it, don't they? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But that's all part of the service that we kind of put in there. When we do the surveys, we look at these things and we advise clients so that they can decide whether they want to take that risk or not. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, you definitely don't want to be getting it destroyed and still having to pay for it. No. Um, no. And do they need, so at the point of shipping, um, would they need an Australian address or is it just good enough to say we're going to Sydney and we'll sort out accommodation later? Well, um, usually returning Australians have somewhere. Um, we do need an address. Now, um, the address, it could be a hotel they're staying in or it could be relatives, it could be, you know, um, it could be the company. Um, but ideally, they don't have the company name on the paperwork, they just put the address in the street. Um, we won't deliver to that address, we'll obviously check that when the shipment arrives in Australia, but from the outset, we do need to have an address. But okay. it doesn't need to be the, the address they move into finally, because people are moving over there and they need to find a rental or they need to purchase somewhere. Yeah, so they've just got to update you at some point once they know. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, and do you have any um, weird, weird stories of odd things that you've had to ship? Um, yeah, I actually should have prepared. <laughs> Last year, I had a, um, a client we moved to the US just in between the lockdowns, and um, the gentleman was a, far a farrier, and they're the guys that 
fix the shoes on horses, I think. But they're very, um, they had a horse stable. And he had decided to make life-size sculptures of two horses in metal. Um, and they're amazing, amazing um, items. I'll, I'll try and find some pictures and send them over to you. But we had to transport these two life-size horse sculptures inside a 40-foot container with all of their household things, and they moved to somewhere in the US. And it was a fun move, actually. It was really, really unusual and really interesting and uh, lovely people. And everything arrived there perfectly, and um, they got their horses through customs. And they are now, um, I believe, on their ranch. <laughs> That's excellent. The US. Yeah. Imagine um, being a customs guy here. who... Imagine being the customs guy who opened that shipping container. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We had to prepare all the paperwork and everything else, but it was the logistics of trying to get them inside this container, which was which was a lot of fun, but we managed it fine. And um, yeah, I'll try and send you some images over. I'm sorry, I should have had them. Um, uh, yeah, they're really and... cool. We'll, uh, we can post them post them with the link to the to this class. If, if you, yeah, no problem at all. That's, that's the one that comes to mind straight away. Over the years, <laughs> oh, I'm trying to think of the most unusual. Um, we've done all kinds of, you know, specialised vehicles, performance vehicles, um, um, incredible collectors' items, boats, um, cat's ashes, um, oh. which are tricky. Um, yeah, but um, but the, the horses were probably the most recent example of something really different. Really yeah, different. yeah. And, uh, and they were life-size horses. That's, that's yeah, they were literally. I was, I was standing next to one. It was up this, this high. <laughs> uh, but beautiful, amazing sculptures. Really, really incredible sculptures. He'd done an amazing job. Two of them. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I'd love to see the pictures if you can post them. Yeah. That would be no great. No problem at all. Yeah. Well, I can't think of anything else. I was trying to think of what else other what other things people would need to know when they're when they're gearing up to ship their things over. Yeah, I, I, it's all relatively straightforward and fairly logical. I mean, the the only thing I would say is plan, um, plan. You know, six months. In, Australia's a big move. Um, if it's not an expat, if it's not a British family moving abroad, it tends to be a returning Australian. Um, declutter before you go. You know, that takes time. That takes a process. And um, yeah, plan it in advance. You know, you can't speak to a moving company soon enough. To, unfortunately, we get so many occasions where people come to us much later um, and then you need to kind of get things moving quite quickly. And, you know, the transit times are quite long. So um, the ones that are planned in advance, you know, we'll be quoting people in June, July and August for moves that are going to be in October, November, December. Yeah. Those ones tend to be the best ones. Um, so yeah, planning is the key, I think. Okay. Yeah, I'm laughing at your um, decluttering comment. My my poor parents moved over about five years ago, and my sister and I insisted that they bring everything that was ours <laughs> in the attic. And no, no, we must have it. We must have it. Don't throw it out. And then they got it here, and we went. No, oh, we probably don't need that stuff. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I think they, my dad was over the moon about that, as you can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> so he just I can imagine the world. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, you know, it's difficult because you need to look at it and decide yourself. But, you should have um, done a video walkthrough with us. We would have been saving them lots of money. Well, that would have been a really good idea. If they were around in five five years ago, it would have been a WhatsApp call possibly. Yeah. Um, right, right. Or a FaceTime, you know. I mean, if you tried Zooming with your dad five years ago, you would have looked at you as if to say, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Definitely. Oh, well, thank you very much for your time. Um, we'll put your contact details on. So if anybody does have any other um, shipping or relocations queries, they can get in touch with you. Um, you're in London. Sure. No problem at all. Yeah, listen, it was an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for uh, extending the invitation. Um, delighted to be, uh, you know, working with you on this and um, we'll uh, be in touch very soon. Yeah, thanks very much. <laughs>